maybe we need to go just direct to consumer, right? We need to just get off of these streaming platforms altogether. This is literally affecting your royalties, your income, and this is why you need to pay attention. Spotify is getting sued in a really big way. So we have complaints about just issues of people getting paid properly by music platforms like Spotify. And we have had other guests come on the show and just talk about their problems, what they feel are misrepresentations by Spotify. And just, you know, this whole like, maybe we need to go just direct to consumer, right? We need to just get off of these streaming platforms altogether. But realistically, we're not really gonna do that just yet. We're gonna incorporate, and we'll talk about that later on in this video. But what we're gonna talk about is this big lawsuit against Spotify. and why the Mechanical Licensing Collective is really pissed on your behalf and why this is literally affecting your royalties, your income, and this is why you need to pay attention to this. Basically, Mechanical Licensing Collective filed a lawsuit on May 16th, all right? So just a hot minute ago. And the issue is in regards to how Spotify altered how it's paying mechanical royalties. And it's in regards to its premium plans. And so what Spotify chose to do was to now combine into bundles within premium audiobooks, okay? So what they do is they go with the premium plan, you can get access to all our great music and all, you know, ad-free, this and that. And you also get 15 hours of audiobook listening time. What's happening is that now, because in this big pool of the subscribers, we now have the audiobook stuff. So it's diluting the pool and it's lowering the rate at which songwriters and publishers are getting paid. Now, some of the questions that I had about this, I'm like, what? How could Spotify do this? Why did Spotify do this? And so I went down the rabbit hole to understand, but we actually have numbers, right? Because remember this happened, you know, the lawsuit happened just a couple of weeks ago. But all of this was in March, okay? So there's been some time that has lapsed for us to now gather some information. In 2022, all the big dogs, or a lot of the big dogs came together and they agreed and executed the Phono Records 4 contract agreement. And in this, they came up with basically like mechanical, you know, statutory rates and, and, and agreed on how all this stuff should happen and how much you should get paid. And so when we look at like, pure music services and how this calculation is done. If it's just music, so we have all music people in the pool, then you're gonna get paid based on the subscribers, based on the royalties and all that. But now what's happened is that they went back and they go, ooh, we saw in the contract, right? That Phono Records 4 contract, that everyone agreed to, there's this little clause in there, okay? There's a little provision. And the provision says that if Spotify bundles services together, it is allowed to pay a lower mechanical royalty. So Spotify is not even doing this on the on the shady, you know, down low kind of thing. It's actually in this contract that everyone signed. So nonetheless, the Mechanical Licensing Collective, which is charged, right, by the Copyright Office to collect the mechanical royalties and to pay you if you are not registered with the Mechanical Licensing Collective, please do that. There's literally like money waiting for you. Okay, people are not even aware of this organization. But in any case, they're like, we're in charge of like collecting all the money. And they actually have some numbers of how much money you have lost since this went into play, okay? But they're pissed. And they're like, this is so not right. We don't agree with it. And then like, what are we talking about here? So Spotify just goes, well, we're adding 15 or up to 15 hours of audiobook listening experience for the premium subscription users. And they're like, you know, even pursuant to the bundle philosophy under the contract, we're like, this is BS. And that's what they're saying. They're like, no, you're not substantially like changing this. This is like a little add on. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But for those of you who are like, you heard the word phono record and you're like, what the hell? Under the copyright law and still in like major record label deals that I review, they still use this word because a phono record, it's defined under the Copyright Act of 19... 76, which went into effect in 78 as an object that embodies sound. It's really that simple. So they go like this, this, this super traditional way of saying a phono record, which is therefore why this contract that we're looking at for like, how the hell does this all happen? And how does it all work? Has that word in it. 
Okay, become your own record label, which is literally if you're like, hey, I want to start a record label. Cool, I got you. Understand the entire music business. I want to set up my LLC. I want to do the marketing. It's a lot. So for example, sync licensing, for example, music marketing, it's significantly cheaper than anything you would ever get from a law firm as far as all the stuff that comes with it. And you want to make six figures from your music career and you want to do this for real. Like I'm going to give you what you need. So with all that out of the way, let's talk about basically what MLC is saying. They're like Spotify's premium plan, did not change significantly enough to actually justify them like triggering this provision in this agreement that we all signed. And they go, you know, this is like a token value of just being like, hey, you can also listen to our, you know, our audio books and all this stuff. And they go, this should not be allowed because it is going to impact publishers and songwriters so much. And in fact, it already has. Now, Spotify hasn't answered as of now, but what we're anticipating is that they're going to be like, no, this is like a legitimate change. We are allowed to change and pursuant to the contract, we're allowed to do this. If they can show there's like real value, right? With the audio books and this and that, you know, that's going to be, that's going to be their assertion. And let me know your guys' thoughts too. Like by adding in the audio book feature, does that really transform the service altogether? And so therefore it really is like a bundled kind of thing, right? So then contractually, they're totally fine to exercise this. Are you on Spotify's side, right? So just be like, well, historically, right? So this is what they're probably gonna argue. Well, historically, the precedent is that the whole royalty model changes over time. That's why we had to come together in 2022 to work this out and to come to this agreement because this stuff changes right? And we actually put this in the contract. In the short term, I know some people are speculating or like, I think that through the lawsuit, the MLC will possibly be able to get Spotify to revert back to the old model of paying <laughs> for the music, right? But long term, you know, as far as just like reclassifying this definition of bundle, and now it's just like, no, like you're a subscriber on our platform. In order to get all the audio listening experience, which includes music, it includes audiobooks, like you're put in this pool. So if you want to be on our platform and you want to get paid from the premium subscribers, that's what it is, right? That long-term will probably be their argument. And then, well, what's the MLC going to say to that, right? Now let's talk about numbers. Let me let me go back to this. So Sony Music Publishing is reporting that there's been a 20% reduction in mechanical royalties because of this. The Mechanical Licensing Collective is saying it's way more aggressive than that. And they are reporting that 50% has been lost in royalties from the premium subscriptions. So for those of you who are already a little bit heated about just, you know, feeling like there isn't enough being paid for music in general, for streaming, for being on these platforms, I get it. Tell me what you think about the additional information of what's happening now. So then going back to the whole, you know, direct to consumer bit, right? We have people who just say, you know, with all this stuff, it's like ra rather than just get all heated and angry about the state of the music business, about all of these gatekeepers that you have to go through, who get to take a portion of your revenue just for like distributing your music. We would just upload our music ourselves, right? If we could, we can't. We literally have to go through these distributors. And then you go down the rabbit hole of like just how upset we are with what these distributors are doing, how they're kicking you off the platform and forfeiting your royalties and just all this nonsense. Well, with, you know, direct to consumer and this idea of like, well, if you're, you know, you meet with me, and we're talking about your upcoming album. I do this all the time. And I'll go, okay, let's talk about kind of like the branding, the marketing plan. We get your contracts into place. We do the law stuff because that's what I do. But, you know, I've been doing music since I was like four. I release my own music. And so it's really important to think about how are we going to make sure that this thing hits well, that people know about it. We get you lots of numbers and all this stuff. We also want you just to make money. And so we're not just going to worry so much about the streaming revenue and royalties, but we go, if there's like 50 people who care about your music, right? Family, friends, and we just even smart, you know, start with a small number. If we can just get them to go and buy your single, download your album and just like pay a fee, or we've had people even come on the show and talk about how like they put their music out for free on like their website and they let their fans decide what they wanted to donate. They're like, you don't have to give me anything, but if you do want to, here's the thing, whatever you want. And we had people just be like, I literally have never made so much money because people just like recognize my effort. They appreciate my music and they wanted to pay me for that. And so this idea of like, well, if you just put your music out on music platforms and everything is tech, you know, for free right away, you're losing out on the people who actually would support you. And so this idea of even not necessarily being like, I'm anti-streaming and I'm taking my music off, just maybe delaying 
and just be like, I'm, you know, I'm considering this as well. I'm working on, you know, a new song right now. I'm going to work on my new album. And so when I release it, I go, you know what? I'm kind of excited. I kind of want to like drop it on my website and make it super exclusive. Maybe we do that for a month. And so like my super like legit fans, I can do fun stuff with them. And if they want to support, amazing. They, they don't have to. And then after all that, I can put it on music platform. So it's just there and everyone has access to it. Everyone can listen to it. And so I think that there's a way and I just want to plant these seeds for you guys on ways that you can legitimately make money from your music despite some of the issues that are happening because we just have super suspicious activity from all of these middlemen. We have, you know, these middlemen accusing you of suspicious activity at streaming fraud and IP issues, intellectual property issues. And so to avoid all of that, and to make sure that we can actually monetize your music, think about the release plan, but also think about how to use the music. And we talk about like sync licensing and trying to get your stuff into TV and film and games and just doing everything that we can to make it so that you have these great assets of music that you can now go and do lots of great things with and make money and grow your fan base and do shows and just be a rock star because I did it. You can do it. And I'm excited to see your growth. Hope you guys found that helpful. Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.